So there's a lot going on in the news today. I've brought in one of the most sought after journalists here in the United States. Uh, she works with the New York Post. She is an author. I have Miranda Devine. Miranda, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me on, Stephen. So um, just so my audience knows, you are famous for uh, exposing this laptop from hell, uh, Hunter Biden, the lies, the cover up, who was involved. You are also an extremely accomplished journalist and author. Um, so I, I want to talk about those. But the, the big story in the news right now is Biden and this Robert Hur special counsel. Mm. Um, you, you read through the Robert Hur report on Biden, uh, his words, his missing memories. You said on Twitter that it appears to be that he is a con artist. What, what do you mean by that? And can you give my audience some examples? Yeah, Stephen, look, when you read the transcript, which was just released, um, of Joe Biden's couple of days of interviews that he had with Robert Hur and his team um, about these classified documents that were found dating from his Senate days. So over 40 years, uh, during his Senate days, um, he had no right to take classified documents home. He had to look at them in a skiff in a secure classified area and was not allowed to take them out. So that in itself begs the question that was never answered in, in the Her report. Uh, Her really went easy on Joe Biden. Um, in his testimony, he's uh, told members of Congress that, yes, uh, there were these classified documents, some top secret, found secreted away in his garage, in his den, in his downstairs study, and his office at the University of Delaware, and so on. And that um, he had committed the same uh, alleged crimes that Donald Trump is being prosecuted for, uh, and yet he was let off the hook. And he was let off the hook because... Uh, her thought that he um, had a failing memory, basically that he was senile and couldn't remember and that a jury would not convict him because they would see him as a sympathetic, uh, you know, fellow with a with a bad memory. Um, and uh, so, I, I mean, that's, I guess, a fair enough determination by a prosecutor, but it also um, lets the DOJ off the hook and, they don't have to go through this ugly situation where they have to grapple with how do they deal with uh, a sitting president who's um, committed crimes. So um, uh, instead of being grateful, though, uh, Joe Biden attacked Robert Hur and accused him of um, sort of taking his dead son Bo's name in vain. And when you look at the transcript, it's Joe Biden who brings up Bo, as usual. And it's a classic example where her asks him some very um, straightforward and difficult questions to answer if he's not going to incriminate himself. And Joe Biden does this sly sort of game. He, first of all, he delays and says, ah, oh, you know, um, um, um. And then he says, he brings up his dead son, which he does every single time he is in trouble. Uh, this is, this is, uh, really, a, you know, Joe Biden has suffered a lot of tragedy in his life. Um, he lost his wife and baby daughter uh, in, you know, some 40 years ago um, or longer and uh, in a car crash. And um, and then his son, Bo, his adult son, Bo, died of uh, a brain tumour in 2015. Um, and but he uses that tragedy, you know, he uses it in every campaign. He brings it up anytime he's in trouble. And here he is again. He brings it up again. After you've seen it a dozen times, you can't help but be cynical um, and see that he's using it cynically. I, I don't think that's an unfair thing to say. And so he brings up his dead son and then he, I think, feigns memory loss because it's extremely convenient for him to, to not be able to remember and to act like an absolute complete falling apart, can't remember the date of his son's death, can't remember when he was vice president, can't remember when Trump became president. Um, you know, it, it's all just too, too neat that he suddenly has these uh, memory lapses at this very convenient time. And that's what you see in the transcript. Anytime 
her comes close to pinning him down. He gets vague. And then he also does another uh, con artist sort of game, which is that he's constantly distracting her and going off track and babbling about, um, you know, distant stories and yarns that he wants to tell and says, I hope you didn't find photographs of my nude photographs of my wife. She's so hot, something like that. Um, you know, just off off comments that are designed to throw her off track and to waste time to filibuster. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's this tactic of one upping somebody where they, they come home and they say, Oh, I've had a terrible day. Yeah. Well, I had a worse day. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Lincoln Riley was killed by an illegal. I can understand. I lost a child too, you know? Yeah, it, it, that's right. And getting her name wrong. Yeah. It's this constant one upping to stay in control um, and I, I do believe that it is a con artist tactic, but I, I do have to wonder um, if some of this isn't a coordinated psyop against the American people. And, and here's what I mean is, you know, as, as one author to another, you understand the power of juxtaposition, right? And so uh, th this report comes out, oh, we, we didn't want to share this. It's so damning to the president, but we are honest, and so we yeah. released this so that you could see this. Oh, he's uh, got a failing memory, right? A week later, he comes out, likely on Adderall and caffeine, giving this bold, angry, uh, screaming uh, lecture at the State of the Union, and everybody goes, this report is fake. This guy, he's brilliant, he's sharp as a tack, plenty of energy, no way he's in his 80s. He's got all of the, I just, I, I'm just wondering if we're being played. Yes, yes, we are. You've got it. Absolutely, we're being played. You know, there, there were a lot of damning things in her report. Um, for instance, uh, he, he testified that, um, and, and he reiterated this, that uh, Joe Biden lied to him. Um, there, there are, parts of the report that he says are just not credible, where Joe Biden says, oh, he never, you know, knowingly kept these classified documents. And if he had known about it, he would have uh, given it to a staff member to take care of. Um, and, you know, there's a an audio recording of he, he, uh, Joe Biden telling his ghostwriter, oh, I've got so, just gone down to the basement and I found some classified stuff here. Uh, and then Joe Biden pretends, oh, no, I didn't mean classified. I just meant that's a colloquial way of me saying secret. Um, no, no. So uh, he, he comes across really badly. And there are all sorts of questions about some of the material that he secreted away, some to do with Ukraine um, at the time that his son was working for Burisma. And some of that classified material would have been very useful to Hunter and to his Burisma paymasters. We still haven't got to the bottom of that. So by Joe Biden acting all outraged and taking umbrage about um, his son, uh, again, that just distracts everyone's attention. That press conference he had, uh, everyone was talking about, you know, A, that Joe Biden was insulted and the poor man lost his son. And if you're a Republican, talking about how, oh, he's lost his memory and he shouldn't be president and we need to get rid of him, he's senile. I think Joe Biden likes to be underestimated. Um, normal people would not like, at 81, would not like to be judged um, senile, but he can pull it out and pull it in when he wants. And so I think uh, it's like the Vinnie the Chin bathrobe defence in, uh, I don't know if you remember this, in in New York uh, a few years back, he, the uh, this is a mob boss, I um, can't remember his full name, but he was called Vinnie the Chin, and uh, and he he was be he was being sought after by the feds, and so he just pretended that he was Gaga and he'd wander around the streets of the West Village in his bathrobe, um, and so uh, you know people have surmised that maybe that's what Joe Biden is doing. Yeah, uh, well, you, if you're going to pull a con, it has to be long term. And yes. so um, he, he definitely could could be pulling that off. Uh, one thing that um, professor and, and lawyer Jonathan Turley pointed out was that any time a question was asked that could have criminal liability, that's when he sees Biden's language switch to yes. somebody struggling with his memory. I thought that was a really, uh, as someone who's probably read, 
hundreds or thousands of depositions, uh, he, he, he's reading this and he, he picks up on that. So I do believe that there is, there is something going on. You know, the other thing now, now that we're talking is, uh, remember when he was campaigning in 2020, like 10 to 20 people would show up. He struggled to get things out. He would go off script and really struggle. Then on the night of the debate against Trump, it was like, he stood up straight. He had all of this energy. It's like, Oh, is this guy on that new fifty thousand dollar a year dementia medicine? Um, it, it was he was a totally different person. Same thing. All leading up until State of the Union, he's like a bumbling idiot. And then that night, boom, he's like got all of this energy. I don't know. I, I you know, we know that uh, JFK was being injected with something. It wouldn't shock me if there's something going on uh, behind the scenes. Who knows? Maybe it's just mega doses of vitamin B. I don't know. <laughs> We, uh, you're right. I mean, something definitely is going on. It, this is a very patchy performance from this guy. He's either looking exhausted, um, you know, almost hung over, I suppose, from the effects of whatever they're pumping him uh, full of. And, and he disappears for days on end before a big set piece like the State of the Union or like a debate. Um, during the campaign, he did this too, it just disappears. And, uh, you know, he's been showing up at, at sort of midday, um, the other day um, he showed up after a long weekend in, in I think, Camp David, um, and he had what looked like a CPAP mask uh, marks on the side of his face that some eagle-eyed person on Twitter picked up. I, I didn't, wouldn't have seen it, but it seems right. Um, why, why is he sleeping or having this sort of, maybe it's not a CPAP, maybe it's oxygen or something, but why has he got a mask on in the middle of the day? Um, and he seemed a bit sort of blurry eyed. Uh, and this was actually, it was almost 1 p.m. Um, when he was sort of buttonholed by the media as he got onto Air Force One. So I, I don't know what is going on, but um, I think he's compass mentis enough to be doing real damage. I know I've talked to people who've been behind the scenes with him when he's been in high level meetings with foreigners. Um, foreign dignitaries, and uh, I have said to them, what was he like? Was he demented? Um, and they said, no, not at all. He ran the meeting. He seemed completely lucid. Um, he he had only a few notes. People around him were deferring to him. He ran the agenda. So, I mean, that was a year or so ago, but I got it from two different groups of people from two different countries. So that makes me think there's more to this than meets the eye. He certainly has got cognitive uh, disabilities, but ha whether whether they're he, you know across his entire brain or or whether they can be remedied with drugs, we don't know. But what we do know is that we're being lied to, and the truth is being hidden from us. And this is a very unhealthy situation, considering uh, the the grave missteps that this president is making in judgment. Uh, the fact that we've got two wars raging uh, that started, uh, you know, under his um, remit. And uh, and also, I mean, Haiti has just blown up and we've just been told, of course, it's obvious we're going to get a whole new influx of um, migrants, presumably asylum seekers from there. They've just opened up their jails um, in Haiti and let out all kinds of criminals and thugs and psychopaths and killers. Um, you can bet that they'll be heading to the border near us. Wow. Oh, gosh. Yes. Uh, but isn't that what the Statue of Liberty says? Send us your prisoners and your mentally yeah. uh, unstable. So, I, I don't know. I haven't been to New York. <laughs> Um, another thing that I wanted to, uh, point out, uh, I don't know if you saw this or not, but representative Cori Bush said that she believes that Republicans are using Robert Hur to get white supremacist in chief Donald Trump reelected. That, that seems, uh, one, a low blow and two, incredibly disrespectful during a professional congressional hearing uh, what are what are your thoughts on her calling Donald Trump the white supremacist in chief? Well, I mean, it's what you'd expect from her. I mean, she's a BLM person uh, who was rewarded for those dreadful riots with a perch in Congress. Um, it's despicable of the Democratic Party to have someone like that there. And she's just behaving according to type. 
and uh, you know it's ridiculous to call Donald Trump a white supremacist, and uh, but this is all really that Biden and the Democrats have to go on. Uh, it's January 6, had nothing to do with race, was not armed, was not an insurrection, and yet that's what they're going on, that this was the end of democracy, that it was worse than 9-11 and um, that it was white supremacy. I mean, how, how did that have anything to do with race? Um, and so that's what she's going to do. And to attack Robert Hur like that, um, for you know, his grave sin is that he's a um, a registered Republican. Uh, this is a guy who just did his job. Um, he had to justify why he let Joe Biden off the hook, um, as he said, "I had to show my work." That's why he mentioned the memory loss because he had nothing else to go on. Um, and I think it was bogus. I think that that he shouldn't have let him off the hook. Um, but he did, and I mean, he he he's the prosecutor. He has valid reasons, and I guess he's being as ethical as he possibly can be. And for that, he's being traduced by uh, Democrats like Cory Bush. And Adam Schiff is just the worst of all. He's the ringmaster of them all. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay, let let's let's go back to Hunter Biden and the laptop. Why was so much energy and effort? Uh, expended to cover up, lie about, bring in 51 former intelligence advisors that people would trust to say that this was a lie. Was there really in their mind that much on the line in order to get Biden elected and Trump removed? What What is your sense of all of this now that a few years have gone by? Yeah, I think you know, the cover-up is worse, um, like Watergate, is worse than the original sin, which is uh, corruption, which is as old as Washington itself. Um, but the cover-up is really egregious. And I think there's more to it. But on the surface, what we have is the 2020 election. You had, um, you mentioned those 51 former intelligence officials. Um, Biden made a big deal about them being bipartisan because some of them had worked for Republican, you know, for Bush and so on. Um, they all had one thing in common. They had Trump derangement syndrome. And so to them and to most of Washington, uh, Donald Trump was an existential threat. They could not allow him to win re-election. And therefore, Joe Biden uh, was by default someone that they were going to cover up for and ensure that he did well. And we know that from Mike Morell, former acting director of the CIA, who engineered that letter by the Dirty 51, uh, lying about the laptop and saying that it was Russian disinformation. Uh, Mike Morell um, thought that he was in the running to be the next CIA director under Biden. So he had some personal uh, motivation. Um, but also he says in emails when he's trying to, to recruit people to sign this thing um, that he wants to help Joe Biden in the debate and help him win the election. And they're all on the same page because they all agree, uh, they don't even have to say it, but all polite people in Washington, D.C. in 2020 agreed that Donald Trump had to go. Wow, gosh, such a big cover up. And and it also came out that uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, he's the one that called in <laughs> the favor to Morell saying, hey, listen, we need you to do this. It, it, I mean, that's I, right. He, he he was in the campaign. He was a senior advisor in the Biden campaign. So there you have uh, an exact um, trail that goes from the Biden campaign through to the Dirty 51. And then um, this, this letter had to get um, pre-publication review approval from the CIA, as anything does from former, most of these people were CIA operatives. Um, and that was done in record time. And what we've just found out is that um, the number three at the CIA, CIA um, the, the COO, I can't remember the name because it was just revealed a few days ago by a Republicans in one of their um, uh, closed door depositions, um, this, this COO gave approval to this letter going ahead. Um, and we already knew that there was at least one other serving CIA member who was recruiting signatures um, so that what you're saying is you have the active um, participation of the CIA, at least part of the CIA, in 
throwing an election, I mean, in interfering domestically with the 2020 presidential election. There was no Russian or Chinese interference that they kept on talking about. This interference was by the CIA and uh, and former high level, four or five former CIA directors or acting directors, people like John Brennan, uh, Leon Panetta, um, they were the ones who interfered. And in such a narrow election, um, you know, won by just 45,000 votes, uh, that could have really made the difference. It could have could have changed the outcome of the election. Um, having, ha you know, not having that letter, which basically killed our story stone dead, um, on top of the fact that you already had social media, you had Twitter and Facebook, um, throttling the story, censoring the story within hours of it coming out. And the rest of the media just accepting that somehow because it had been censored, because the Dirty 51 had pronounced, uh, you know, the laptop to be Russian disinformation, that our story um, should not be followed up and was not credible. And, of course, after the election, um, New York Times, Washington Post, et cetera, they all just quietly updated uh, their records to to say, well, yes, you know, the laptop is real. It was Hunter Biden's. These emails did exist and they have been corroborated. Yeah. It uh, reminds me of uh, when Senator Schumer said of Donald Trump, be careful. These intelligence agencies know how to get you six ways from Sunday and they don't like you. Uh, I mean, he was basically prophesying they're going to get you. And uh, they did. They tried every way they could from story after story, uh, cover up, embedded agents on January 6th. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. It does make you wonder, why would Donald Trump sign up for another four years of this? But um, that that's on him to do that. Uh, what what else might we learn? I know you have a new book coming out, but just to, to stay on Laptop from Hell, um, what, what else would people learn from uh, reading this book? Well, look, I, I think... The Laptop from Hell, the second book uh, coming out later this year is basically a sequel. It's the cover-up. And a lot of that stuff I've, I've been talking about with the CIA and so on is part of that. There's also, um, you know, part of, I think, why Trump was um, not liked by that sort of, you know, what Mike Benz calls the blob. It's the sort of the Pentagon, the CIA, the intelligence establishment, um, the State Department is because he he was sort of a, a, an original. He didn't want to go along with wars. He wanted to put America first. Uh, there are a whole lot of um, ancient grievances and and agendas that the blob has. Um, that that Joe Biden was groomed. I mean, he was their puppet and and has been since his earliest days in the Senate. Um, and this is not something that Donald Trump, Donald Trump was his own man. So that was why he was such a threat. And I try and delve into that. Um, laptop from hell, I think, is kind of, I mean, without talking, you know, uh, uh, the book myself, I think, you know, it's an easy read and it's just a, a quick introduction to the laptop, which is really an um, a portal into the Biden longstanding influence peddling operation around the world. Uh, he internationalized it when he was vice president, what he'd been doing in Delaware for, for many decades. Um, and, you know, that his family uh, earned probably 20 million, maybe more, 20 million that, that the Republicans have managed to track down. Um, but it was from China and Russia and Kazakhstan and Romania. These are not, um, you know, countries that are squeaky clean. They're all corrupt. Uh, and many of them um, do not have America's best interests at heart. Um, they are adversaries. And uh, it's, it's you know, worrying that we have a president that's potentially compromised by all this money that's come to his family. Um, and, and also it tells the story of the dysfunction um, of this family and the kind of mythology of Joe Biden as this great family man, um, modest Joe, lunch pal Joe, moderate Joe. Um, none of these things are true. Um, he's really, I think the American people are, are coming to see his character, um, you know, more clearly um, as time goes on and as he he reveals himself um, in the White House. But I, I, I think that that mythology 
you know, it's been set in place for 40 years and I think it's very difficult to overcome. There are still people in this country who believe that Joe Biden is honest and a great family man and, um, and you know, he lives a champagne lifestyle and he's been a grifter all his life and he showed no compunction about uh, endangering America's national interest when he was vice president and um, helping his son and his brothers um, you know, cash in on his power and his name. And in Ukraine, um, ironically enough, Donald Trump was impeached for Joe Biden's sins. Um, you know, Joe Biden did intervene to help the company that was paying his son a million dollars a year. Uh, he got the prosecutor fired who was investigating that Ukrainian energy company, Burisma, that was paying Hunter. Um, and uh, and and after that prosecutor was fired, um, the next prosecutor, who Joe Biden loved, said he was a solid choice, um, he dropped all charges against Burisma. So, um, you know, it it's just the corruption and the influence peddling and the unethical behaviour that went on. And yet Donald Trump, who just wanted to 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 have that investigated and he'd come up against brick walls in the DOJ um he he's the one who gets impeached it's it's sort of a classic story of how washington just ran rings around donald trump and you know if by some miracle he is to win again um let's hope that he's you know one spit and twice shy yeah absolutely well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to put a link to your most recent article over on the New York Post, as well as a link to Laptop from Hell. Uh, if you guys like this content, uh, make sure to give this video a like, hit that subscribe button so I can keep getting incredible guests like uh, Miranda Devine. Miranda, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Stephen. It's been a pleasure.